Hello and welcome. I hope you remember this element. I said this element is a little, little bit artificial because it does not really exist in reality. So then we added this element yeah, and came up with this element. TT1 element. Where is it? Okay, the TT1 element is basically the really existing D element. And this was a combination of D and PT1 elements. And I hope you also remember that I also said the same thing here. This is not really existing. PT element is not really existing. So we're going to do the same trick as before. We will use a PT1 element behind. Yeah? And we are ending up in an element which is called P. DT1 element, which is basically the really existing PD element. If you remember how we produced the TT1 element, we used our first element here, then we had the second element, and they were in series. The second element was the PT1 element, the first element was the PT, was the, in this former case it was the PT element and now it's the PT element, so here is the output and here is the input. Xi from S and XO from S. Here we see it all time, yeah? the transfer function of the PT1 element, GPT1, is KT, I will call it, divided by 1 plus S, and now, because it's the second element, I call it 2, ST2, okay? because I remember the transfer function of a PT element has also a D inside and GPD from S is KP multiplied by 1 plus S and I call it T1 because it's the first element so I have two time constants there and T1 and T2. What is the total transfer function. The total transfer function G from S is of course GPD from S multiplied by this because they are series. GPT1 from S. So it looks like Kp 1 plus st1 yeah? and now here we have kt 1 plus st2. Hmm? These are the two parts. Now I will write them a little bit different. Yeah? Just in another order. I will write just kp multiplied by kt. 1 plus st1 divided 1 plus st2. And since these two things are constant, yeah, I will call, just call them k. 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2. And this is the transfer function of a PDT1 element. Now we can get give these two away. Let's think about what it means for the frequency response. So I just have to substitute all S's with J omega and that's it. Okay. Let's think about what it means. Imaginary axis. Real axis. Here we have one. Okay. Now let's think about 
let's think about this part here, the upper part. This is omega t1. This is the upper part. Now let's think about the lower part. It's also one. Yeah? And if t2 is a little bit bigger than t1, or bigger than t1, it looks like this. It's longer. Yeah? The imaginary part. And we will end up here. Okay. Multiplied with k also, but k will only, only add length. Nothing with the angle. Let's think about what this means. Yeah? If we do have if we do have omega equals zero at zero frequency, what does it mean? Yeah? The absolute value equals one plus zero, j zero one. 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 divided by 1 is 1, it's k. And the argument is there is no, there is no angle, there is no angle, 0 degree. Okay. What does it mean for unlimited? J infinity. What else does this mean? It's not that easy, yeah? Because I do have again, I do have to do my little trick here. Because I can say k j omega equals k divided by one plus j omega t one, and now I divide by j omega, and here one plus j omega t two. And they are also divided by j omega, so this equals k one divided by j omega plus t one, one divided by j omega plus t two. Yeah. If we're getting to unlimited, yeah, this will get zero. This will get zero. So we end up at k multiplied t one divided by t two. Okay. What about the argument? Zero degree. That's interesting, right? Let's think about this. Yeah? If omega is unlimited, this green arrow will have 90 degree, and the blue arrow will also have 90 degree. 90 minus 90 is zero. Good. Yeah? Seems like we're right. But in between, in between zero and unlimited, we have two cases. In this case, yeah? if t1 is smaller than t2. The argument from g for j omega is always smaller. I will make this now that it is clear. Argument, yeah, angle. So I have to do this here also. This is a little bit more clear because this means smaller and this is smaller than zero degree. Okay? Smaller than zero degree, it's negative. Yeah? Because the angle, the, the, the green angle yeah? minus the blue angle, because the blue angle is bigger, is smaller than zero. Yeah? But if t1 is bigger than t2, The angle of j omega is bigger than zero degree. Okay. Because if the green angle is bigger than the blue angle, we're still positive. So there are two different types of this PTT1 element, depending what it is. 
Let's think about that. Let's think about that. Here, in our body plot. Let's just transfer the functions. So we call it B D T one element. And the transfer function g from s is k 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2. g from j omega is k 1 plus j omega t1, 1 plus j omega t2. And the absolute value j omega equals k multiplied square root 1 plus omega t1 squared divided by square root 1 plus omega t2 squared okay. this is how we could calculate okay. and the argument of this is okay. arcus tangens Omega T one minus Arcus tangens Omega T two. Okay. These are the formulas. Now let's have a short look at this formula again. Okay. This could also be written. This could also be written as K. 1 plus st1, 1 divided by 1 plus st2. So, this is again a pt1 element with k1, yeah? and this is a pt element. This is the pt element. Okay? Let's assume, let's assume our our uh, t1 is now which case do we want? We want to have this t1 smaller than t2. Okay. Good. Let's remember. Let's remember the pt1 element. Okay. So it started at zero. And I will just use here let's say ten going up to here. Here this band is at one divided by T two. Okay. This is the frequency here. So omega g, yeah? one divided by t, it is this two two, two. fast. Yeah? Let's have a look at the pt element. Pt element. Yeah? Here we have some k. But I said. We want to have this T1 smaller than T2. Yeah? So this means 1 divided by T1. T1 is smaller. Must be bigger. Ah. Let's, let's say we will bend here yeah? at this point. No. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are one divided by T one. Now let's think about what it means. T one must be bigger. This is the case. T one is bigger than T two. Okay. This is the case if T one is bigger than T two. What do we expect? Angles bigger than ninety, bigger than zero degree, positive angles. So 
How does the argument look like? PT1 element. Let's make a first guess. So we had we had zero here. Here we're going to jump to minus 90. Jump. Here we're exactly at minus 45. Okay. This would be the argument of the PT1 element and the argument of the PT element. Yeah, would look like this. We are here zero. And here we're going to change at the band to 90. Okay. And here at plus. So this would be the argument curve of the PT1 element. And this would be the argument curve of the ah, of the PT element, and this would be the argument curve of the PT1 element. And now we just have to multiply them. And multiplication, as I said, multiplication is done in Bode diagram just by shifting. Yeah? Here we have one, this multiplied by one will be this, yeah? so we will stay here. Then in reality we will move up here. Yeah? And here, yeah? Mul this multiplied by 1 will always be this. But starting here, at this point, at this band here, we will flat out. Because here one is dropping, one is rising, and I already mentioned it before. Yeah. Then it will be zero, moving to zero. So the total function will look like this. Okay. Here we are at k. The delta frequency here. How much is this? This is 1 divided by t2 minus 1 divided by t1. This is T1 minus T2, T1 multiplied by T2. Okay. This is the delta frequency here. How much further are we here? Yeah. Here we are at 1 divided by t1. Here we are 1 divided by t2. How much bigger is this? So we need 1 divided by t1. One bit divided by t2. This is one frequency divided by the other frequency. So we end up at t1 divided by t2. This here is t1 divided by t2 bigger. So how much bigger is the absolute value? Exactly the same, much bigger. k multiplied t1 divided by t2. It's just because, just because the math. Huh? Here, we got the same thing. Huh? Same thing. Two different approaches, graphical approach, mathematics approach. It's the same thing. Just by putting in relation those two frequencies. 
this frequency divided by this frequency tells which factor bigger this frequency is. Yeah, and this is the factor. So the absolute value must be this factor bigger than this. Right? Right. Multiplication. Logarithmic scale. Just add the two lines. And here we just have to add the two arguments and we'll end up with something like this. Yeah. And see? Here, minus 5 at this point. Minus 45 degrees is this point, so we are bigger than zero degree. Yeah, we are bigger than zero degree. And at low frequencies we are at zero, at high frequencies we are zero because here it's 90 degree and here we have minus 90 degree. So we are ending up exactly this. And T1 is bigger than T2, so bigger than zero. Correct. Yeah. Let's also check the other, or jump response, sorry. Yeah. Jump response, jump response uh, will look like this. Yeah. We are at zero. Then here we have high frequency. Yeah. We have high frequency, and at high frequency, we jump to k multiplied t1 by t2. T1 is bigger, so we are jumping high. Okay. T1 is bigger than T2, so we jump somewhere here. K is 2, yeah. so poo, we will jump to 300, yeah. very high. K, T1 divided by T2, yeah. and then with the time constant, yeah, we will reach, if low frequencies, we are at K, yeah, over here, low frequencies, we are at K, K is in this case 3, yeah, so we will reach somewhere We're coming from very far above and we'll drop here. Do this. Here we are at K. And here we again see the time constant T2. This is how this looks like. Let's have a look also on the other case. Yeah? So let's have a look on a BDT1 element. Yeah? This is exactly the same, but this time let's assume our PT1 element looks like this and will move here. And let's assume our k is again 3, but we will start here. So this is again 1 divided by t1, and this here is again 1 divided by T2 mm -hmm. and in total here we start to compensate each other yeah. in total
we will look like this. Yeah? Multiplied by one. Here we will start to drop. Yeah? We will be exactly this amount higher than the other line. And here we are going to be horizontal again. Okay. Now let's do the same trick. Yeah. How much higher is this frequency than this frequency? It's 1 divided by t1 divided by 1 divided by t2 and this is t2 divided by t1. Okay. Here we do have k. Yeah. Here we are dropping, this is going down. Yeah. How much do we have here? We do have k divided by t2, t1. This is k t1 divided by t2. This is k t1, t2. Same. Yeah. k multiplied t1 by t2. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah? And the mouth we also reached. Yeah? Regardless of how big T1 and T2 is. Yeah? Here, we also, in the graphical approach, we also reach this. Yeah? Let's think about the argument. Yeah? Pt1 element, here we are 0. Here we'll go to minus 45 and then to minus 90 pd mm. pd we are zero here at the band we will go to plus 90 here we have plus 40 44 so this will be the pt1 line this will be the this will be the pt line again same this will be the pt1 line and in total we will move down here reach somewhere a minimum and go up here symmetrically and then reach against zero angle is negative in this case yeah? this is what we expected yeah? because this time t1 is small smaller than t2 yeah? how does the how does the jump response look like? We are at zero. At high frequencies, we are going to jump here at again k multiplied by t1 divided by t2. In this case, we would jump to 0 0.03. Ah, we cannot, I cannot draw it also. Yeah. But in the end, we will reach k. Here we again have the time constant t2 and from this little jump we will move like a pt1 element to the scale. Yeah. These are the two variants. Yeah. These are the two variants. t1 is bigger than t2, t1 smaller than t2. Frequency response yeah, and step response. But each time k, the math is the same. Yeah. One time it's overshooting and going back, and the other time it's just a little jump and then slowly. The slowly approaching the limit or the end value, this is always the case. Yeah. BDT1 element. 
rather complicated element, right? Yeah. But basically, it's just the overlay of two elements. So if you're doing like it like this, yeah, it's rather easy, I would say. Yeah. It's just there are so many options there yeah, because we can shift all those all those bands. They might be somewhere. PDT one element. This is the real existing PD element. Next time we are talking about another element, an IT1 element. So if this is a BTD1 element, and a BTD1 element was the series of a BT and a T1. A DTT1 element was the series of a D and a T1. What will an I and a T1 element be? A series of an I and a T1 element, a BT1 element. We'll see how this looks like. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.